Good to see you, John. Good to see you too. Yeah, it's nice to be connected. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's quite in a journey. And and uh, as I said to you, it's so glad you're on board and uh, it's, it's super cool. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for, for bringing me on board and such an incredible roster of, of artists. And um, I, I think this can be such an amazing, amazing experience. So thank you so much. Yeah, really cool. And uh, yeah, just um, um, just maybe for Olivia to give you a short introduction, um, how I got in contact uh, with John. Um, um, because I think that that's quite, a sp to me, it's, uh, it was quite special. Actually, uh, John was invited by Sanjay and the Korean NFT uh, team to, uh, to be a, a special guest. Uh, you know, in, in the room is, and, um, and I, um, I was joining normally, I always love to join the Korean NFT rooms because there's so much talent and the quality on discussion is always very high. Uh, people talk about art creation. Um, so it's, I, I always feel that kind of room is, 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 is and let's say it was always different than in other rooms and other countries. Uh, the rooms are held. It's it's a lot about content and it's about a lot about the creational uh, process. Uh, so I always love to be in the rooms and um, um, I had the privilege once even um, uh, Sanjay and Dong Lee actually invited me to be a guest and you know to explain what it meant to be a, a collector. But in one of the rooms, then um, I, I I I went in and John was there and. Um, he shared his story about uh, the, the, yeah, let's say his, his art story, um, which was really imp impressive. But one thing really struck me, and uh, it is a story that um, I have quoted a number of times uh, about this very unique space where we are in. And then John, you start to smile because I think I already told you twice or three times the story. But um, John said, he said, um, you know, that he, he started to uh, uh, offer his NFTs and very soon um, his traction uh, uh, caught on. And not surprisingly, because John is, is, is such an amazing artist and being involved with Planet of the Apes and, and Star Wars. And uh, he's, he's such an amazing creative artist. So, um, uh, but then actually he said, um, he confessed something because he said, I was so taken by this NFT uh, growth that I just, I just started to produce. And every day I started to produce and sell NFTs and um, um, it, it just called on me. And after a while, actually, you know, I started to realize and, and, and take a quiet moment and look, look back, what, what did I create? And actually when I, saw so, uh, some of the last works that I made, actually, I started to conclude that, um, actually, I felt according to my own standard, I made some works that I, actually, I'm not happy about quality wise. He, he started talking with his collectors and, and asked them, okay, what do you think if I asked to, to buy my work back? And I think your collectors more or less encourage you to do so. And, yeah. and, which, <laughs> and which, uh, which, John, uh, which John did. So he went back to those uh, collectors of those works that he felt were below par and literally he bought all the pieces back and i believe you burnt them right john yep yep and you know <laughs> that is a story that really struck me so much and i think that that is absolutely the beauty of this new space is where the connection between collector and artist uh, can be as such that an artist can be open and frank about it and 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 uh, show strengths but also show uh, his his or her weaknesses and communicate and 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 take action on that i thought it was an an example that i never heard of before and uh, uh, that's why john i will never forget your name and, oh my goodness uh, now it's you. true you know and then i was <laughs> You know, we were taking off of the TM uh, of the, the Meta Art Club uh, project, and um, you know, I I I had Susie Q and and and, and Sanjay and 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 uh, Biju with Billy, 
And then I said to I said to Sanjay, I said, you know, I love to have John on board because his story will resonate and and super cool. Very soon, John and I were talking, and you know, again, it shows his. Um, kindness as well and because I, I, I we were talking for maybe 20 30 minutes and I was explaining the project and without hesitation in the same spirit John, John said listen I think this project is so wonderful it's connecting artists um, together with collectors and especially in a time like this we need that because so many people enter the space um, so he was immediately he, he he, he joined us and and uh, you know and 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 promised to be one of the 35 artists, which obviously we are so delighted about it. And you can imagine <laughs> that John has such a standing, um, not only in the world, but I think especially in the Korean art community. And I think the Korean the Korean artists they really stepped it up, uh, you know, much bigger and uh, even. Biju came back, she said, listen, in the beginning, I told you I can only do two pieces, but now it's actually, also John is on board, I want to make three pieces, and it was really, <laughs> really cool. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so it's just really the story, so it's so nice to share that uh, with you, Olivia. Um, um, I, I, I love to know, actually, again, more from about John, uh, you, John, and about your art form, and about what you're doing, you're, you're, you're launching your, your apes, uh, you know, I think thousand collectible. They are amazing. Honestly, it's Thank a whole you. different kind of a level. And I would love to hear about this. And um, yeah, so Olivia, you know, you, you have, you're such an outstanding interviewer. And um, I know this conversation is going to be super interesting. So I'm going to um, uh, sit back and, and listen to a fantastic uh, conversation. So again, thank you so much, John, for being in the team. Um, we hope this is just the beginning and thank you so much for being part of the artist group. Oh my really. goodness, thank you, Frank. That was incredible. Such, um, you, you, you make my story sound so much more interesting. <laughs> I can listen to you talk, you know. Thank you so much for, for having me here today. And uh, it, it's honestly a, a pleasure and, and a real honor to, to be considered the, the one of the 35 um, that that you and your team have curated and, and handpicked for for this uh, for this collectible. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, John. And it's a real pleasure to be here with you today. I'm going to just begin by um, doing a little um, entree and just just introducing you um, after Frank's you know wonderful and generous introduction. And and you know Frank obviously feels so personally invested in you and in this project so it's just wonderful to to hear those stories from him um john park you know you really need no introduction um as a creative um force and i just wanted to really start this conversation for the meta art club and for all of our collectors who many of whom know you already um but but for everyone in the broader context, you know, how did you begin your journey, your incredible journey um, into art um, through your professional life? And can I, can we just begin there? Yeah, um, you know, as as a as a child, I loved I loved art and I loved drawing. Um, I felt that I, I had very I had a lot of difficulty, um, uh, you know, growing up. Uh, in school, I wasn't. I, I, academics was was very difficult for me, um, and communication was also another difficult element. And so I, I felt that I had a hard time uh, really expressing myself. And um, I would I would always hide away and 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 stay underneath my desk with our with my little lamp and uh, and just draw mm -hmm. draw the things that that I that I would watch on TV on Saturday morning cartoons and draw the things that are in my imagination. Um, it, it, it never dawned on me that you can, you can make a living in art. I've always been told from a very young age, I have a very conservative, um, Asian, Asian parents and, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they don't really see, uh, you know, a lot of examples of successful artists. And, and so they had a lot of concern for me growing up and, uh, you know, they, um, you know, they said, hey, whatever makes you happy, we'll support you. But um, 
you know, it, 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 it was, it was a very confusing time when I was a child at around the time I, I, I was around, uh, my third year in high school. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, take a class, a summer class, um, at the college of art, uh, college of design at Pasadena art center, college of design. And I met, um, one of my early mentors and he really, he really, uh, kind of sparked a light in, in this whole idea of uh, making art and design into a potential career. And uh, it was the first time that I heard someone um, who had such belief in, in you know, his students, but also the belief in, in, in you becoming successful, that you can pave your own, your own path as long as you're willing to do the hard work. So, I went in with full conviction. I, I just thought I have no other, no other life to live. This is it. Art and design is the only thing that I know. Um, I, I don't know anything else. And so this is the way I'm going to live my life. I got into, I got accepted into Pasadena Art Center College of Design um, at the age of 21. I was fortunate enough to uh, receive a full scholarship at that college. I I got to uh, meet a lot of creative and wonderful folks there, and uh, and I and uh, I was very lucky to be mentored by Scott Robertson, who was my my first uh, major mentor in college, and uh, he helped really uh, cultivate um, you know a good foundation and and a, an incredible um, you know career path for me, and uh, I. Until this day, he's he's one of the pillars of, of why I'm here today in front of you and 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 being, um, uh, you know, uh, having some sort of uh, uh, you know presence or or uh, being able to work in the industry is 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 due to Scott Robertson. So, um, I I just am so grateful for all the people who believed in me and and so supportive of of my creative path. I. I wanted to give back, and so I, I wanted to pursue teaching. So I, I started teaching um, in 2009. Um, I fell in love with it, and uh, I, I, I wanted I wanted people to go through not go through the same struggles as I did, um, trying to figure out what is the best way to learn and understand art and design. I wanted to follow the footsteps of my mentor. Um, I went in, and and. Uh, been teaching for for many years and uh later in 2014 um i decided to open a school with my business partner um who's also a really good friend of mine he's more, more like an older brother uh james Pake. and uh we opened a school called brainstorm and brainstorm is a school that is more of a, a trade school it's skill-based for those who are undergrad or postgraduate students who want to uh, you know, find an alternative way of, of getting education and um, really who don't want to pay high prices for, you know, private institutions to, to get really high quality education in art and design. And so that was really my motivation. And, and I wanted to, um, you know, help be a part of the educational movement and, and really provide those who really don't have the financial means or, or the financial access to, to uh, spend on, on such an expensive uh, educational experience. I've been doing that and can still doing it. And, and, and I, I love teaching. Um, in addition to teaching, I, I work uh, in the film and video game industry. Um, I've, I was fortunate enough to work on projects such as Transformers, um, Dumbo with Tim Burton, um, Lone Ranger with uh, Gore Verbinski, and uh, and and the last major project that I got off of was uh, Avatar sequels with uh, with James Cameron, and that was a fantastic experience from a creative standpoint, from a production standpoint, and from a design standpoint. It was just everything that I that I hoped in my career. I was like, that's going to be the highlight of everything. Um, and, and, you know, after my time there, I went back into school, uh, just continue teaching. It's, it's one of my main passions and, uh, and, and, and it was around at the end of 2020, uh, a good friend of mine, Ben Morrow, 
um, he messaged me and he said, hey, there's this thing called NFTs. Have you heard of it? And I, and I told him, I was like, I don't know what that is. What, what is that? He says, well, it's basically, you know, crypto for, you know, uh, it's basically you could sell art with crypto. And, and I'm familiar with Bitcoin and Ethereum. I've, I've been an investor since uh, 2017, 2018. And so I thought that's, I don't think that's for me. I don't know if anyone would buy my art. I'm a commercial artist. I, I do work for films and games, and it's not anything that I imagine my artwork to be printed or, or, or hung up on a wall. But he really gave me the encouragement. He said, well, I think this is going to be the future of our industry. You should check it out. There's something here. And uh, I, I think, I think there's, a, there's a big opportunity for artists and, and digital artists like ourselves so that's when I went in and, and, and that's kind of where the story began with, with Frank's introduction. Um, I got into the space not knowing anything. Um, I thought, well, this is just a silly movement. I have no idea what it is. Um, it was just this naive thought, this naive notion that I had of selling you know, a JPEG for, for <laughs> cryptocurrency was incredible. Um, I thought this can't be real. This has to be a dream. <laughs> it's going to end sometime. And, okay. and, uh, and I just kept on posting and finding work that I had that I, the personal work that I've saved and, and other works that I just, I just wanted to continue and, and paint and illustrate and, and mint. Um, and that's when it dawned on me because I started connecting with the folks who were strong believers in this space, the collectors the like-minded people um, who really understood what NFTs were. And, and, and that's when the education started for me again. It was understanding what NFTs meant. And it, it, was, it was more than just selling artwork. It was actually a, a means of connecting with the collectors, but collaboratively disrupting the space. Um, just like with cryptocurrency, it's a, it's a form of disruption, it's decentralization. And that's when I looked at the body of work I did, I said, this is not the way I wanna be remembered. This is not the way I wanna lead the movement as an artist in the NFT space. Um, you know, I, I wish I could do it all over again, if I could do it. And, and a collector friend of mine said, well, you know, it would be amazing if, if you didn't feel confident about the work you did, you know, what if you could go back and, you know, maybe you could undo certain things. And so we were just talking and, and, and the idea of buying back and burning came up in a light discussion. And he was like, oh, you know, but you don't want to do that. That's, that's ridiculous. It's too much money. And, you know, you've worked really hard to do this. He was like, well, for the future, you know, I think I think there's a long term goal here where, you know, you want to help cultivate a really healthy, you know, environment and space for both the collectors and the artists like yourselves, you know, really set a good precedent. And I looked at the time that I had in the space and the people that I connected with, and that's what really, really hit me the most. And, and I thought, this money does not belong to me. It's not it's a representation of of our connection and really the movement. That's when I started to buy back and burn my pieces. I had a conviction. I wanted to let the community know, uh, not only to the collectors, but to the other artists who are making the same mistakes, um, who are, who's not really seeing the long-term vision that if you believe in this space, you have to believe in the movement and you have to, you have to pace yourself. You have to grow it in a very healthy way and, and, and it's a marathon, it's not a rat race. And um, from that point on, I, I, I felt like I, I, I saw the forest before I just saw the tree, but I saw the big picture, I saw the forest and, uh, and I fell in love with this whole space, every single aspect of it, uh, the empowerment, the, the ability to, to be not only self-sustaining, but to have a voice and not to necessarily have that voice be driven by a large entity, a conglomerate, a big studio, a corporation. And I thought, 
we cannot mess this up. This is our, this is our duty. This is our job to make it good because this is going to really define the foundation of our, of our future of this space. Um, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of folks who are coming in with the idea of, you know, this is a great way to make money and I'm just going to get out. And I think those folks really have the wrong mentality towards this. This is, this is much bigger. Um, and it really inspired me and, 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 and just my, my whole vision about this whole industry, uh, more specifically from a commercial designer point of view, my goal is to bridge that gap. I want to, I want to find a way where I can use my skills and the knowledge that I have learned so far um, and, and the skills and knowledge that I've learned in the, in the commercial industry and find a way to really bridge the gap between NFT world and the film world. And that is my mission. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's my, my backstory up to, up to this point. <laughs> I'm sorry if it was a little long. <laughs> no, not at all, John. No, no, no. Um, that was fascinating. And I'm, I'm just so blown away by your um, commitment and your humbleness and also this mission that you have um, to really raise the bar in terms of the work, because the art, it, it is all about the art. It's, it's not just about the, the noise, as you're saying, if, if I'm reading you correctly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you've done is incredibly courageous in, in going through the process of, of reacquiring your work that you'd already sold, especially in this space, because it seems like, you know, this is happening all the time. You know, people are kind of finding new, new ways to, artists are finding new ways to express themselves and their work is constantly evolving and it kind of, it's evolving at breakneck speed, you know, so one artist might have a number of different styles that might be really strong in one or two and less strong in others, but they're still churning out the work because they know that there are different audiences that they're playing to. So I think yes. your, your purest approach um, and, and you know, you're very noble in, in the way that you're, you're framing this for yourself and also for your collectors and also for the industry at large. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think a lot of it stems from the fact that I, I, I'm so involved in education and as someone who is an educator, um, I feel that you, know, you have to lead by example and, uh, and I, 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 I would love to see the future of NFTs be ingrained into the commercial world. Um, I feel that NFTs is really gonna, it's really not only disruptive in a positive way, but it's gonna reformat the way we think about things, the way, the way people treat creatives and artists, and 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 it's such an empowering empowering moment, uh, you know, that that we're living in right now for the creative folks, and um, and I I love every bit of it. It's it's been incredible, and um, I've never felt so confident in in myself and and my self worth. And it makes me want to do something where I want to invest in myself. I never had that before. Um, it was always, you know, exchanging time for for a paycheck and and just working for a video game in entity or a film so that I could put food on the table. But now it's well, there's this incredible community and there's an incredible space. Um, that I can now finally invest in becoming a better artist and connecting with all of these people all around the world. And I'm just absorbing it. I, I'm just taking it all in and, uh, and, and really just, it, it's just been incredible. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and John, you know, the way that you've just described it, um, you know, working commercially to put food on the table, I mean, I'm sure that that's how you feel inside because you're human and, you know, we're, we're all ultimately kind of cut from the same cloth and, and we all have the same concerns. But from the outside, you have been at the forefront of arguably one of the most competitive industries in the world, which is filmmaking. And you have been creatively not just involved, but that also at the creative um 
you know, zenith of some of the most incredible projects. Um, so, yes, I completely hear you, what you're saying, John, about, you know, working as and, and, and creating for clients, and that's not the same as feeding your artistic soul. But yeah. at the same time, you have had this incredible creative license. And, and I think you're very humble in the way that you, you frame that, but obviously there is a reality to that for you. <laughs> Um, as well you're not just saying it to be humble so yeah. I just I wanted to ask you you know you you have come from art in your family before mm -hmm. you um, were introduced to these incredible mentors who then took you took you by the hand and helped develop you into into the artist that you are today can can we start with with you know what your family instilled in you in terms of your art practice and and how you show up every day for your craft that's such a great question olivia i i have to say my folks are are very hard working folks and and i'm sure just like many other parents um they're very hard working the the one thing that i i'm so grateful for for my parents is it was really their um their attitude towards life and their attitude towards, you know, hard work. They said, you know, and towards, towards success, their whole concept is if you're going to go in and you really want to make this your reality, don't do it 50%, not even 80%, not even 90%, do it 150%, leave nothing else on the table, go all the way in. If you've done that, and you and you haven't made it at least you can say you've tried you've genuinely tried and there is no regrets and my father who really instilled that his his attitude towards life and 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 his work ethic is really around that mentality it's a very uh it's a very uh a, a very bullish and 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 an aggressive kind of work mentality um and i've seen him uh you know, uh, approach things for his own work in the same manner. And, and I didn't really understand at a young age. And he just kept on asking me, you know, those the, simple questions, son, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to do art. He says, great. How do you want to do art? I said, well, I would like to do this, this and that. And he goes, okay, great. So what are you doing today to get to that point? And it was just a series of simple questions that made me really reflect on my words versus my actions. And so it, I believe it just compounded over the years that made me really hone in on my craft. And I believe that was the support, the love and support that I got from my folks um, that was truly kind of the, 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 the seed of, of, of my growth. And um, I know, I know it's not, it's not anything else where they took me to, uh, you know, after school art programs or anything like that. Um, it was more, it was a more in a, in an in emotional support and, and, and more of a psychological support. They, they would always ask me things. Um, and it wasn't really done in a, a cheerleading, cheerleading fashion. It was more done in such a analytical and, and, uh, and very, um, uh, more of like a measure, you know, my father would always ask me, well, what did you do today? That's going to make you great tomorrow or better tomorrow. And, and uh, it just got me thinking about, you know, my own, my own path and my own trajectory uh, to success. And, and really it's, um, it, it's, it's really in me to determine that. And so that, that was a support that I got from my parents and, and, and I think, and I love them every day for, for really pushing me that way. That's incredible, John. And it sounds like they were making you accountable for your own path. Yeah. It's interesting that you said they weren't just cheerleading. And I think just as a parent and, and you know, seeing kind of the cultural trajectory of today, I think perhaps we've lost our way a little bit. Um, and this isn't limited to the NFT space, but certainly, you know, the training of children in art from a young age is almost like a kind of you know an additional way for yeah for 
a business to be created around that. But at the same time, it has to A, come from the child, first of all. And then you're absolutely right, you know, the way the, the way that your parents cultivated your, you know, autonomy and your, your responsibility for your own path and how you were going to get there from a young age was is really interesting to hear about. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a new parent. Uh, I, I have, uh, well, I have a six year old daughter. I'm learning to, uh, to, to guide her in the right way. And, um, a lot of the positives, um, that I want to instill in my daughter and my newborn son is not only being there for her emotionally, for them emotionally, but to help instill the right frame of thought, you know, the critical thinking and, and like you said, Olivia, the, the accountability, you know, uh, um, not relying on others to determine your own path to success. You know, you have to, you have to create that route. You have, you, it's, it's up to you as an individual to really make that happen. If you really want it, you have to look at what your goals are, how to distill it down. What are some of the, and, and, and I know it's, it can be daunting for a lot of folks, you know, looking at a large goal, but you can, you can start to distill it down into very simple steps and just ask yourself, well, what can I do today to get a little better and to get further along? And uh, it, it, it was interesting because I, I remember when I failed at, you know, art, my parents never ever said you're failing. They just said, well, you now know what to do better tomorrow. And I always thought that's a weird, interesting way of encouraging me. <laughs> it was, it was very, uh, soothing to hear that because um they obviously acknowledged my failure or or something that i th that i didn't do right but in a way that made me feel like i was improving and it, and it felt like i was failing forward and that failing forward made me less uh hesitant or less scared to try things out and to um to go in with full conviction and 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 to do it with all of my all of my power and, and all of the, all of my effort as much as I can. Um, yeah. And, and that, that was something that was very inspiring. I, I don't think I fully understood it when I was younger, but now that, you know, looking back um, a lot of, a lot of the ways my, my parents empowered both myself and my older brother, it was done in a very unique way. That's unique to them and, and, and unique to our family dynamic and, and, uh, and, and just to see, how that's coming down to, you know, my craft and who I am as a person, as an artist. And, uh, and yeah, and that's, that's what I want to share. I want to share my, my story, but I hope I can inspire those um, through example and, uh, and, and, and hopefully lead through example. Well, you're definitely leading through example, John. And I love that idea that you've just articulated of failing forward. I think I'm going to, borrow that <laughs> <laughs> it's yours <laughs> <laughs> thank you and and I think you know the fact that you have invested so much of yourself and your time to creating brainstorm in order to teach young people children and young people you know I'll I'd like to find out a bit more about that after we've delved into your career path a bit more so um you know when when you started out in the film industry, were you what were the tools at your disposal? You know, where was the technology when you started out, and and what does that look like now when you are creating your arts? And you know, are you informed by the technology, or is the technology driving what's in in your mind? And and are there limits to that? I mean, obviously, there's no limits to what's going on in your creative, <laughs> but uh, yeah. No, yeah, that's that's a great question. A question. Um, yeah, I I uh, starting uh, starting off, uh, you know, in 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 my film path early on, um, you know, Photoshop was 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 there. Um, it was still a relatively new tool, especially to myself. I I wasn't fully uh, comfortable with with the tools just yet. Um, but my responsibilities were quite small. Um, I I started off really as a junior designer, uh, designing uh, very 
small objects uh, that would be utilized in cinematics and in film. And I was just happy with the notion that you can make a living drawing and, and it's being appreciated and utilized in this commercial world. And um, it, was, it, was, uh, it was such an eye-opening experience for me. I, I, I didn't know something like this existed. And, and obviously the more I was getting experienced, the more I was getting informed, I realized how important a lot of the fundamentals and, and the foundation that we, I learned in school the technology of the tools has evolved, absolutely. Uh, my primary tool that I use is still Photoshop for all of my digital work. Um, but, you know, there's a lot more 3D technology and 3D programming skills and modeling tools. And now even VR, virtual reality, as a, as a, as a tool to create. It does, it, it can have an influence in, in your, in your, um, creation process but I only think because it's such a new tool that you know it, there's this moment of um, adoption and 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 this that adoption period can really um, influence your design it can influence a lot of your a lot of your uh, you know creative notions and and, and storytelling um, because you're trying to still learn the tool I think once the tool is, 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 is secondhand nature and you feel very comfortable, you get back to the roots of storytelling, you get back to the roots of um, really speaking, uh, you know, a, a creative voice. And, 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 and that's what I love about the new tools that come out. It's, there's like this brief moment of this educational, um, I guess like a onboarding experience, you know? <laughs> Uh, I remember when I started modeling and, and, and creating things in VR, it looked pretty much like what you would see other folks do. Uh, that's because I was learning how to utilize the program. And so it did inform a lot of my, uh, my work. But after a while, I was able to inform a lot of my own ideas using the tools um, and, and allow myself to express things that are far more complex, things that would be very difficult for me um, to do in a 2D traditional uh, Photoshop kind of, uh, kind of format. And so I really enjoy that ebb and flow of, of, uh, of a new tool being introduced. It's challenging. It's not the easiest thing. And, and I know that, uh, you know, artists can sometimes find it a little bit um, just feel it feels like you're starting all over again you're, you're you're having to you know learn this new thing to kind of express uh, a creative idea that you're that that you may already be really good at on a different medium but um, I find that to be a very interesting element of, of, of education and also just evolving as an artist you know I, I feel that if someone is open to new tools and new methods of working it's only going to expand your visual library but it's going to expand your creative output and and i i i love it i'm just i'm 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 always fascinated by other tools um i do still revert you know for a lot of my personal work and and things like that i still revert to more 2d digital kind of medium um but i i will never say no to a new tool that 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 pops in and, and, you know, I just want to see what, what can you do with that? So. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. I mean, I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's so valuable to, to have those, have you shared that um, process for you? Because I'm sure that there will be artists who watch this interview who really are grappling with the technology and, and trying to find their way with that. So thank you, John, for sharing your, your, you know, your endless thirst for knowledge, even at your level, um, you know, as a creator. So I wanted to ask you as well about, you know, the way that you, you um, define yourself as a concept artist um, before the crypto art part, you know, has, has that been influenced by artists like Craig Mullins, who I've read that you, you know, you love his work, you know, how, how, how do you draw on, you know, your subjects? 
Oh, geez. That's a great question, Olivia. I, Craig Mullins, in my eyes, uh, was someone who he is, is, is light years beyond uh, what I'm capable of doing. <laughs> he, he, he honestly is, in my, in my, my own subjective opinion, uh, the godfather of digital painting. And um, it might not necessarily be from a standpoint of storytelling, but from a technical standpoint and also from, a, uh, from just a, an experimental standpoint, he really pushes the boundaries of how you can represent and create things digitally. And I found that so refreshing, Olivia, because he's constantly always evolving and, and challenging himself um, as an artist. And, and, I, and I know that a lot of artists, uh, you know, they want to solidify a working process so that they can focus on the creatives. He, he always wants to break the process because he, I, I know that it's from talking with him, he, he's, he's someone who has this theory of if you, if you reinvent your own process, can that alter the outcome of what you create? And I thought that was such an interesting theory because it almost felt like he was trying to figure out another way to use the tool. Like, for example, if you're using a hammer to hammer the nail, can you use a hammer for something else? And that's, that was his, his focus. And, and, I, and, and I saw that in every single one of his paintings. I was so inspired by that. That act alone made me want to push myself as an artist and, and really push the boundaries for myself in terms of what I can or cannot do. And, and he, he really opened this world of, of creative thinking um, from a tool standpoint, but from a process standpoint. It was more about, can you come up with something brand new if you, if you approach it the other way around? If you're used to going clockwise, to get to your, your answer, what happens if you go counterclockwise? What happens if you go top to bottom or bottom to top? Do you end up with a different answer? And I just, it was such a weird theory-based answer that I heard from him, but I was curious. I, and, and that's, I was so curious to try that out and to really push myself as an artist. And I have to say that, you know, I, I still feel like I'm in the, 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 you know, just on the surface, you know, I'm just barely breaking through, through, through the, uh, through the surface here. Um, and, and, and I, I feel that there's so much more and, and I've enjoyed um, a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the outcomes and a lot of the experiments that I've, I've kind of dived into. Um, and I felt that it's evolved, it's evolved my own visual vocabulary, but my own process and, and, and execution and, and I noticed a lot of my own styles have kind of started coming through my own, my own voice and, and some of the things that I've, I felt like was uniquely me. Um, I know that was something that I struggled with for a long time, was trying to find my own style and my own voice. But uh, I think through, the, through this series of experiments and trial and error, I'm starting to find uh, my own visual language with this interesting process. And it was all thanks to Craig Mullins. Um, I love the way that you have described deconstructing the artistic process. Um, and it's not dissimilar to, you know, when you hear about the artists of, you know, Picasso's era creating their, their canvases and then destroying them because they weren't satisfied with them um you know there's there's there is that you know you're probably your harshest critic I would say um but also that 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 process is is how you grow as an artist so it's really interesting to to learn about that and I just wanted to ask you you know you've you've talked about with NFTs paint illustrate mint I love that but there's obviously a lot more to it so so your your subjects your subject matter in your art, you know, is very diverse, but at the same time that it has this common thread of really drawing the viewer in and, and 
you know, I certainly feel like when I'm looking at your work, I'm completely immersed and I'm going into some new worlds. And I am, I may be looking at this beautiful landscape, which actually looks very painterly and, you know, really high art. And then I might go, you know, have, have a kind of moon landing and, and, you know, then I might become a monk. I mean, you really, really, you really draw people into your work. And I think that that's such a gift. Can you, thank can you. you, thank you. Can you, can you tell us a little bit, John, about how you, um, you know, how you start a work and, and where does it start? Does it start from a place of organic, let's just, let's just put pen to tablet, so to speak, or, you know, use the tools or, or do you plan a work beforehand and then get going? I mean, how does that look for you? That's a great question as well, Olivia. I, I'm really inspired by ambient videography and cinematography. Um, yeah, I've been, for the past few years, I've actually been watching films uh, without the audio. Um, and, and my whole approach on that was, could I understand and be just as immersed and interested in, in the story without the sound or the words um, or, 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 or the audio? And, and can I still tell what's going on? And so that made me really look at the visual storytelling, which is, it's about the lighting, it's about the composition and, and, and really um, the moment of what's taken place. That really inspired me to come up with different themes such as, um, I, and when I started NFTs, I, I started doing these, um, these Bitcoin monks and I thought, Hey, here's a fun theme. Uh, you know, I love the idea of, of 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 digital currency, but something that was more of a summoning. Like there's, it's it's been here on Earth, and like and there are these these beings who uh, who are now summoning, and and there's this rapture of of uh, of you know these these currencies that are peering from from the water or or from these from these natural landscapes. I wanted to tell that story without audio. I wanted to tell that tell that story visually, um, and I wanted to do it in a way that really captured a lot of the traditional and tangible feel of a painting. Um, that's what I really love when I look at traditional artwork. I can feel the the paint on the canvas. I can feel the intention of the artist who used a palette knife or or or, or a fully loaded brush, and you can feel the the just the textures and the brushwork that that they're trying to convey. I wanted to combine all of these things, all these ingredients in one, and just to see if it's possible. And uh, you know, some some were successful in some areas, and some weren't. And and it's a learning process. Um, but thematically, I've always been interested in taking something that is uh, very abstract and very new and trying to inform the viewer in a way that's very traditional or something that's, uh, that, that we're familiar with, which is more of a traditional kind of visual medium or, 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 or a visual um, quality. And, uh, and I want people to look at it and go, that looks like maybe it might've been done with some sort of oil painted influence, but the subject matter is very new, it's very, it's very current. It's very much in, in the realm of the future, or it's very much in the realm of cryptocurrencies. Um, and I wanted to combine that. It was it's an interesting juxtaposition. So <laughs> that's fascinating. That that's really, really, really so interesting. And you know, your work does have that painterly feel and that painterly approach. Mm -hmm. And it is some of your works, you know, I I I'm looking for some signs that it's digital work and I can't find <laughs> them. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. That's really incredible. And, and you know, you're in the heart, John, of um, California, which is arguably the, the home of crypto um, and where it all began, depending on where Satoshi Nakamoto actually existed. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the whole industry is still very much... Um, 
a part of the Californian culture, I guess, and broadly speaking, you know, has that, you know, are you around people in that space personally and, and do they influence you? You know, um, if you were to ask me that question two years ago, I would say no. I, I, it, I, it felt it was maybe a, a very underground kind of thing. And, and I think a lot of people um, that they probably didn't understand it. And like myself, I didn't really understand it. So uh, because we don't, there are so many people who didn't understand it, even amongst my friends, um, there wasn't as much trust in it. But now it's all about crypto. I think, I, think, I think a lot of folks are seeing the true intention behind cryptocurrency and, 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 and the future. Um, not to get too deep into our financial situation, you know, the world economy and, 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 and the federal government printing as much as they're printing right now. You know, there's a lot of concerns and, and talks about inflation. And I just thought, well, this is something interesting. I, I started really diving into what is the situation that's happening. The government continues to print, which really brings down the value of, of you know, the money that we've saved over the years. And so I thought, well, that's, that's very unfair. It's, 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 it makes it very hard for folks who have been saving for years and years and that, that value just goes down. And I thought, well, Bitcoin, would never do that. Bitcoin's value only goes up. And I thought this is a perfect insurance. It's a hedge against that. Um, but more importantly, it was that message of pulling away from the traditional banks and, and that decentralization so that governments can't dilute your, your value was such an empowering, it's such a powerful statement, not only on the financial end, but that idea that no one entity can dilute what you're worth. And to kind of go back into NFTs, that's, that's, that, that was the meaning of what I brought in. An industry, a studio, a director, an art director cannot dilute your worth. You have the power, the power is in your hands. And I felt that NFTs um, really brought that message into the artists, you know, both from uh, a painter, a 3D modeler, a sculptor, a musician, a writer. And I was like, wow, this is an incredible medium. Um, and just like what cryptocurrencies has done for, for you know, value and, and, and finances, NFTs is doing that for the creatives. And it was that. And, and I just it just made sense. Everything clicked all at once. And, um, and the conversations that I'm having, Olivia, as you mentioned, I'm having a lot more of those. There, there's like this awakening. And it's very interesting that it's happened in such a short amount of time. I don't know if it's the conversations that are just happening now uh, due to the, world, the state that the world is in, but that awakening is happening. And I think a lot of people are realizing, you know, their own self-worth that they're more, they're worth more, you know, and they need to see it. They need to believe it. And, uh, and they should, they should really invest in themselves. On that note, John, the layering that you have mentioned, um, you know, that NFTs enables artists to explore visual art, sound design, um, you know, to build elements into their work that might traditionally be seen in a movie, for example, but, but now they're part of um, the visual work that becomes an auditory work, that becomes an immersive work. You know, you're at the forefront of, of the technology and of cre creativity and technology marrying. So if we look at everything that's happened in the last year you know fast forward that to five years I mean that's almost kind of like a, an eternity away at this point <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do, do you do you have a vision for for how you think the nft space may develop or you would like it to develop I I do have a vision um it's probably my own dream or my own hope 
I feel that a lot of the creative things that you'll see will be community driven. And it's going to be community supported. And just like uh, other platforms uh, like Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter has done, I felt that NFTs is an accelerator of that. And which is why I'm such a firm believer um, outside of all these other, you know, there, there's some other narratives and things about it and a lot of skeptics in the space. This is the one thing that's really going to redefine and evolve the whole industry, at least from my standpoint, the commercial industry, it's going to dramatically change things. And, and five years from now, I would love to see projects and films being made and supported by a community of people who were supporters in that vision, who have a stake in that project and not necessarily being owned by the top 1% or, or, or a studio who has a monopoly over things. Um, I, I believe that, you know, at least from uh, the idea of capitalism being more in the power of the community and the power of, of the people. Um, and, and it almost becomes, um, you know, the, the voting, they have a say, they have a, they have a vote. And if, if they believe in your project, then you're gonna get the proper funding. They may purchase your NFTs, you use that funding to then go into production and, 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 and develop something. But now that is, that is conviction. That, that is an actual physical, uh, that is a digital representation of them saying, I'm a supporter of your project. And you, how far you take that is gonna be it's it's all everything is all interconnected from the early supporters to the final product and 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 that's that's going to be so exciting and i don't see that that's not even happening now but in five years i hope that becomes the norm i hope that becomes how things are going to original content gets created how things get published um how things get um seen how things you know in in the movies and 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 uh, on tv you know it's it's going to be more driven by the audience and not driven by one single person at a studio because they're an executive who gets all the who gets to call all the shots i think i think that's going to be really exciting so that's that's so powerful and and john i know that our time is coming to an end so i have one more question <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I also love to fire my question later after it's Alicia. Really, it's, you know, the last point you bring up, John, I am an extreme firm believer that the communities are going to be in the lead. Yep. And you see it already follow, following, you know, I'm from a generation where the big corporation and the big leaders, you know, saw the community following. You know, yeah. uh, take a fashion brand like Kors, they have the crocodile on it. And there was the following, you know, wanted to affiliate and, 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 and be uh, and wear it to belong to something. I see a reversal happening. I feel the big corporations, the companies want to actually join the community and the communities are in the leads. Yeah. So actually the point that you brought <laughs> forward and we've seen it already in a way in the NFT world, right? Visa that started to buy a crypto punk. Oh wow! Yeah, Visa bought for one point five million dollar a crypto punk, and why? Wow. Because they want they wanted to join the community. Yeah, and yeah. it's exactly in that spirit that you mention it. So I think that point is is I'm hundred percent aligned with all what you said about that. Totally. So so thanks. Uh, but Olivia, your question, and then I I love to have one last question as well to uh, to John. <laughs> John, it's been such a pleasure and, and an honor to talk to you today. And I, and I just wanted to wrap, wrap up with, you know, when the Renaissance originally happened, um, we saw this confluence of artists and patrons um, slash collectors. And, and it was really powerful because it was kind of a genesis out of a time of, of plague and um, it was a rebirth. That was why it was called the Renaissance. Can I ask you if 
you feel that we are in the midst of a digital renaissance right now where as you've mentioned, the agency lies with the artists, the creators, and there's a new collector that is emerging and you have a new relationship, which is a much more direct one where you are speaking to your collectors, they are interacting with you. Mm -hmm. And how is that informing your process? And, and that's my last question. <laughs> I could awesome. speak to you all day. <laughs> No, it's 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 incredible to uh, to to connect with collectors who have such conviction in your work and your in, in the vision. Uh, but to your point, Olivia, in regards to a renaissance, I believe we're in a technology renaissance. We're in this really interesting time where we're this we're in this digital era where everything everything is getting reformatted, and and I know that there's a lot of disagreements, and and I think. I think a lot of the older models are 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 going to be concerned and worried about this shift, but it's so beautiful at the same time. And seeing the congruence of digital art, technology, and financial support from the pay, from from the collectors all come together in this space is such a powerful statement. And it basically, to me, it says that everyone is ready for this change. Everyone is ready to make this leap that we want to leave the old world and build the new one. And, and what's exciting, Olivia, is we get to be the ones in front. We get to help pave the road and really make a difference and, and set a positive precedence and, um, and, really help inform and inspire the new generation of artists, the new generation of digital creators, uh, you know, techno technology, technology based engineers, you know, folks who want to focus more on, you know, other systems and things like that. Uh, we get to inspire investors and people who are in the finance world to think, think and see from a different lens. Um, we get to inspire and rewrite the script of how a company treats people, how a company produces a project. It's not going to be the same, and it shouldn't be. Otherwise, we're not changing. We're not growing. We're not evolving. And that's what I'm really excited about. That is the renaissance that I believe that we're in. Everything is, everything is changing. And I just, I want to, I want to, enjoy every single moment of it. I think this is something so special. And, um, and it just to connect my, the world, my world of people that I've met has expanded so fast and it's, it's incredible. And, and it's incredible to be here even today with you folks. And uh, I would have never had this opportunity if I, if, if I never got into NFTs, if I never got into crypto, so. Before I hand over to Frank, I just want to just end our discussion on, on the line that, that you encapsulated and you have said, come for the art, stay for the future. And I love that. Thank so you. John Park, thank you so much for your time today. I'll pass over to Frank and thank you. And I hope to have an opportunity to speak to you again over a podcast at some point for the Meta Art Club. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia, for amazing questions again. It's uh, it has been such it's such an amazing hour to listen to uh, to both of you. Uh, fantastic, uh, John. Um, um, you you just launched of you're about to launch a, a small collectible range of thousand apes. Yes, if I'm not yes. mistaken. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, I, I I understand that the white list it's already full. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know it's 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 all already reserved. Can you share a little bit uh, what is your thought behind it, and also uh, when it will be launched and further details? I'd love to hear your your absolutely, your absolutely. Thank you, Frank, uh, for for allowing me to take this time to explain this project that I'm launching. It's uh, it's called Angry Ape Army. It is a PFP project. Originally started off as a as a avatar based project. Um, I, I saw what these other projects were doing, uh, and it was very inspiring. Board Yacht Ape Club, 
crypto punks, me beats, and uh, I've been following them. I didn't understand, you know, the 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 importance of it. I just thought, huh, these are interesting, you know, generative arts that are that are doing really well, and and obviously that caught my attention. But I wanted to know why are they doing well. The why part really got me interested, and and it was really based on a community, and so seeing a lot of the artwork that was out there um you know i know there's other new new projects that are coming into the space and i thought well i would love to do my own version my own vision of this and and something that was done at a quality that really represented my one of one edition paintings i wanted everything to feel like it had a handcrafted quality that people can appreciate every single brush stroke and detail um, even if it was generative, you know, for folks to have a piece of my art for a much more of affordable price. The statement that Olivia made earlier about come for the art, stay for the future, it, it was such a core uh, message of this project, which was come for the art, stay for the future of the, and, and, and the community. And uh, we launched, uh, we actually just did a whitelist launch today. Uh, there is a total circulating supply for the first wave of apes uh, at 3,333. Um, we were lucky to get this incredible partnership with a metaverse company called Netverk. And uh, um, Netverk is a metaverse uh, uh, a platform and a company who, who basically is doing this incredible um, you know, virtual VR digital land where you could essentially build um your own architecture on on these in this incredible land and and you can do all sorts of things you can play games you can you can do uh mining um there's social events that you can take place on this metaverse mm -hmm. and their systems were just incredible um i was able to get in touch with them because my former student was actually the co-founder and he actually told me about this company and i didn't know what it was and it just happened that, you know, as I was developing this PFP project for months, he said, hey, what if we, what if we came together and what if, what if, what if we can have your Angry Apes project in the metaverse? And I thought that would be incredible because not only does that bring utility to the project, but there's something in it beyond just a, 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 a digital avatar. And then we started to really dive into, well, what are the mechanics of this? What are the benefits of this long-term? And so we decided to cap our circulating supply at 3,333 as being the OG apes. We wanna incentivize the community to basically hold on to it for long-term value, but also hold on to it because we will be gifting them uh, what's called cells. And there's two types of cells. One is called the nano cell and one is called the mutant cell. It will be dropped into their wallets um, as long as they hold on to it for a certain duration and they get to basically evolve and breed unique um, angry apes that will be born from those cells. The community then has the opportunity to hold on to these additional evolved apes or to sell back into the secondary market. We wanted to basically expand the circulating supply by giving the community the power to populate that supply. That supply would not be controlled by us, the creators. It's something that we would only give into the hands of the collectors and holders of the apes. It allows them to really share with other new members or, or allows them to at least get some financial reward and, and, and benefits from, from holding that. And we wanted to create kind of a, 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 an appreciation model that allows, allows people to not only, uh, you know, make, make uh, you know, investment returns on, on their purchase, but also hold on to, you know, the OG apes for the long term, which is the metaverse. This project, it, it started with the artwork with being the main goal and intention. We partnered with the right people, and it's just this incredible group of, of dedicated folks that came together. And, and really, out of all of this, what I mentioned earlier in, in, in the interview is out of all of this, we hope that 
our goal is to fundraise enough capital to do our own movie. We want to do our own movie where, where it's going to be supported and a lot of the, a lot of the decision making will come from the community. We want to involve the community at an early pre-production phase, have them have a voice in the decision making based on a community vote and allow them to see the early stages of this development go into production. Myself and another, the other co-founder, Emmanuel Shu, we've worked in film for many years and we have a lot of contacts in the, in the, in the industry and we know a lot of directors and production designers. We want to put together a pitch deck that we are going to be working and sharing with our community of the Angry Apes supporters, build it up to a certain point, kind of bring them along for the ride, and then get it in front of studios like, Net like Netflix. We want to, we really, I, that, that's like one of the goals. I really would love to see something that was born and started from the NFT community and bridging that gap with the traditional media outlets, the traditional entertainment outlets and see if if we can actually make this happen and that is one of the biggest goals and one of the reasons why we've collectively come together to launch this project wow this is fantastic and i understand that the whitelist now is full it's fully subscribed already yeah it's full <laughs> it's uh we had a uh, 1600 spots and uh we it, it it just filled up really quickly and so we were very shocked by the the amount of support wow. and um, it's it's just incredible. I I, I still cannot believe it. So wow. congratulations! It makes, thank you so much. It really makes us want to work that much harder. And um, you know, it goes back to you know the, my original sentiment of how I feel about the space is that it's community driven, and that empowerment really makes us feel that much more confident in 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 the work that we're putting in and our team was so fueled by that it was this energy that it just started to just really come out of us you know and 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 that energy is something that makes us want to work two three four or five in the morning uh for this project and um you know despite how tired we are we're still so excited you know, to do this for the community, but to just see everybody collectively believe in this thing. Um, and it makes us want to work that much harder on this project. And, um, and again, there's this mission statement um, of, of, of really, um, you know, making and disrupting the space. And so, beautiful. Yeah, I, yeah, beautiful. Thank you, thank you so but much. But I, I read, I read on the website they're talking about up to eleven thousand one hundred and ten very angry apes. Is that yes? Uh, and so the first thirteen hundred that were the OGs. Is that correct? Yeah. So the first three thousand are the OGs. Three thousand three hundred thirty-three. The remaining seven thousand seven hundred seventy-seven. Um, it's going to be the total circulating supply cap uh, that we're going to be releasing. Uh, that is not something that we're releasing new apes. We're, we're yeah. creating systems so that the community can breed the apes and release them into the secondary market. I understand, yeah. Only yeah. the community, only the holders can really populate and fill in that, fill in that supply. Um, if they don't want to, then it will never get filled. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's kind of how we wanted to really drive the project and, and, and really show our conviction that, you know, this is something we believe in and, and also give the power to the community. If they wanted to, um, you know, breed these apes, you know, from their OG apes and also, you know, if they, cause there's a lot of folks that are looking for short-term trades yeah, um, sure. that they could use that as a way to sell to someone else who wants to join the community and they can actually sell an ape without having to sacrifice their original holding and so that was the idea oh nice and when will be the actual launch when they will be released so the the public sale is this sunday on the 24th um so we have a whitelist that's just started uh, about 20 minutes ago <laughs> so it's the whitelist pre-sale um that's going to go from today all the way until uh friday or saturday of this week, so about three days, so folks could uh, you know take their time to 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 get the their apes. 
Um, the public sale happens the Sunday on the 21st, and um, the reveal is going to happen on the 24th of next week. So that's when everyone will know exactly what kind of uh, angry ape they got with the different traits. And we're very excited for that. <laughs> so uh, I, got, I got to see a sneak peek of it during the, uh, during the, the generative development. And I was just amazed, you know, the team did such a fantastic job and um, it was a lot of work put into it. And, and we're very proud. We're very proud of the, of, of the final product. So. Fantastic. Uh, so some inside information. So if Olivia and I would, would love to, to join the Ape Army, uh, then we would, would go 24th and look on the second remarket. Is that correct? You guys can actually join on the 21st. So the 21st. 21st is when it will be available to the public for, for purchase. Um, I, we, we believe that there's probably going to be a few, you know, around um, in, in uh, you know, like adi additional, you know, um, apes that haven't been uh, purchased. And so the, uh, the mint price is 0 0.08. So we yeah. wanted to make sure that it's the, the barrier of entry wasn't too high. Um, but the reveal will take place. Once you once you purchase uh, once you mint it the reveal you'll know what kind of ape you got on the twenty yeah. fourth and now that so that's when that oh, when, sure. when the ape will be revealed. Yeah, now I'm pretty sure that after this talk, talk both Olivia and myself love to join in uh, the, the <laughs> army. It's uh, it's, it's super. Oh gosh, thank you so much. And and Frank, I just want to say for the record, thank you so much for for reaching out and and. And connecting with me and, and bringing on bring me on this project for for Meta Art Club, I, it's 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 so incredible of you and 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 Olivia for for bringing me here today to share my story and and uh, to be a part of this a part of this community. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. And John, to be honest, what you have just all mentioned, there are a lot of um, similarities to what we are, what we aim to achieve with the the, the Meta Art Club. Um, so we really, we are even, and you know, yesterday evening I had a function at my house, I, I invited 15 people and I explained, that was the first event that I organized, um, and I explained the whole project, we did a live Zoom with two of the, two of the participating artists, so actually what we also do, we actually are curating also the collectors. Because what we really oh, wow. aim, what we really aim for is to have a very curated, high quality artist linked with really people who are interested in the project and want to collect serious art. So in that so in that sense, um, um, Levina and I next week we do six we do kind of a roadshow in Hong Kong. So we have okay. six live events where we each of the events we invite thirty people, and we really try to onboard the collectors. So in a way there's a lot of similarities. And another thing is also is that in the future, we could well foresee that, let's say the top 10 or 20 collectors, we make a kind of committee where we, within the committee, we decide, you know, because this shouldn't be exclusive for those 35 artists who are in the mm -hmm. group now. So in case we want to bring in new talent, so there will be a kind of a committee, a community committee, in order to give more artists the chance to, um, to, uh, to be, uh, within this small universe that we are creating between collector and creator, wow. so That's uh, yeah, so so in a way, um, uh, John, um, uh, hope that um, you can think along with us. It would be amazing in the future. We can talk with you and do something together for the special collectors who are, uh, you know, who are jumping in. We, we personally, I feel it is so important that more attention goes to the artist and, um, you know, and give them the platform to shine. Uh, yeah, what has absolutely. been, yeah, what has been great that um, two major auction houses already express interest to talk to them. Uh, you know, we, we wow. shared the artist list with them and, uh, you know, um, so that in itself is already a compliment. I feel that we can give to the team and um, yeah, we would love to work with you and, and see how we can, you know, create that, that universe uh, artist and collector. Oh my goodness, that would be an honor, Frank. Thank you so much. Yeah, so incredible. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, we have been talking for one, more than well over one hour. Um, <laughs> you, you are just such an amazing uh, artist, uh, person. Thank you. 
um, you, um, I, I really will recommend everyone, every artist, every collector to listen to this interview that will be posted wow. uh, later on after the editing and listen to Thank your you. words because uh, <laughs> it is so inspiring. It's so passionate. It oh, is wow. so Thank wise as, at the same time that um, I think you are the future. And um, yeah, I am just... Um, thinking that I just were, were happened to be in the room when I heard you speaking in the Korean NFT uh, room yeah. <laughs> and, and got connected. And so it's a little bit... It was, I was going to say, it's very serendipitous. It's, it's, it was meant to be. And, yeah. uh, and, and Frank, thank you so much for, for believing in an artist like me. You know, it, 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 takes, it takes two people to make something incredible happen. So... Mm-hmm. Um, thank you so much for for your conviction and also um, just connecting me to to all of these other wonderful people. So I I, I can't thank you enough. So thank you very much. Both ways. So thank you so much. <laughs> Lastly, for the apes. Uh, so we go just go to the network ne- network uh, site, correct? Uh, it would be angryapesarmy.com. Okay, angryapesarmy.com for sure, because for sure, Olivia and I don't want to miss out, right, Olivia? <laughs> <laughs> right, I would love an angry ape. <laughs> Thank they you are, so much. They are, John, they're incredible and, and, you know, just really, just really incredible artistically. So, yeah. Thank what you a, so much. Thank you. Yeah. Really thank you so it. thank you so much, John. It was just an hour, of, more than an hour of, of enjoyment listening to you, and uh, we stay in close touch. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you for your time. Have a great thank rest you. of your day. Bye bye. Have a great bye. day. Bye bye.